Today I'm going to just do a quick rundown of the stuff I use in my bag. Now this is mainly because I've had quite a few messages and questions of about some of the gear that I use and um, if I would do a what's in your bag. Now some of it is expensive, some of it's inexpensive. The bag I use is a f-stop tiloper 50 litre and I will do a separate kind of review on that because I've had it probably best part of a couple of years and it's so comfortable that even when I'm not using it as a camera bag if I'm hauling anything large it's I use it it's been a very impressive bag well let's just crack right on with it I'll stick a picture here of what it's like when it's full. Now, obviously the Canon EOS R is what I'm filming on, um, along with the Rode wireless mic, um, but I've still got the box in there. Um, the tripod is, obviously would be strapped to the side, and the 17 to 40 F4 lens is on the camera filming. But in general, it's usually attached to this, which is my Sigma 100-500 f5-6.3 and there is a video, just a five minute video on my page of what I think of it working with the EOS R. My videos are all pretty much shot on a Hero 6. I have a little spirit level on the front and one also on the back. It's run through a cage that has a 52mm circular polarizer on it. Um, cold shoe spacer because the microphone that I use, which is the Rode Video Micro which is the my preferred method on this. Um, yes, I am a bit of a Rode microphone man, obviously with the wireless, the micro, and also the Rode Go, which we'll get to. And that's generally just lined up like this. And it's on a Manfrotto, I'm not quite sure what it's called, but it's um, a trigger action adjustment. Um, I've often just stuck it on the fences to use. I use it obviously for um, doing some filming when I'm in the camper. Yes, it's dynamic range isn't great, and I would rather use like the EOS R that I'm using today, or I used to have a Canon 70D that I used to um, use for it, but it's just all so bulky. I think this actually works fine. It is for what I do anyway. Let's put you down there. And like I said, I the, the microphone I use um, on the EOS R, in fact, this is a, a fairly new purchase because when I'd go out filming, I'd have the micro on the GoPro for my audio but then on the camera there was nothing and I'd end up keep swapping over from the GoPro to the EOS R just so I could get some audio whilst videoing but it was a pain I had thought about getting the same again to go on there but um, after reading a lot of reviews I ended up going with the Rode Video Mic Go just because I it's going to give me much better audio and I had to make a little spacer for it just to move it away because when that sits on the camera and the screen's here I kept bopping my face and everything so at least now I I have managed to to make an extender that takes it along the edge of the it sits more like that now as opposed to sitting back here so hopefully that will be beneficial 
the box for my Rode wireless microphone, which I'm obviously using at the moment. A little bit controversial for me is the drone that I use, which is the DJI Mini. Now the reason for me why it's a little bit controversial is that I find that I do lose the signal very quickly because it just runs on the standard original Wi-Fi. It doesn't have the follow me mode, which I'm sure uh, most of you are aware is on the Mini 2. But the annoying thing is, is that I'm sure it's just down to a software thing. The follow me I would like to have, I must admit. I probably will update it to the two because I want to have the follow me, uh, follow me feature. Also, this has, I think, a top speed of about 26 miles an hour. And I think the Mini 2 has a top speed of 45, 46 miles an hour which would be much better for that follow me feature and also doesn't rely on the wireless for the connection it runs on the same connection properties as the um, Mavic Air so that'll probably be something I do relatively soon just a waterproof case for holding extra memory cards micro SDs for the GoPro and for the Mavic Mini and then some uh, X, uh, SD cards for the EOS R. Just uh, a newer Virtro pouch where I keep four batteries, five if you include the one in the camera, but um, I number them and then when, if I'm putting one back in the bag that's used. I stick it the other way around so I know that it needs charging. And also by numbering them I know that I generally tend to try and use them in numerical order constantly so that they're all getting equal equal charge. Right, that is the main the main compartment. I'm always impressed by the amount of room there is in these in this bag and like I said I will be doing a separate video on it so we can um, we can talk about that some more waterproof trousers in the dry bag the amount of times I've got soaked they were just 10 pound um, Peter Storm I think that I've had them a long time I've had them probably 15 years but they're small, they're compact, and they keep me dry if I need them. My old trusty Bushnell XLT 10x28s. Now I've had these a long time, you can't get them anymore. And I broke the, um, or should I say, the wife knocked it off into the sea when we were getting a boat over to Skoma Island to see the puffins. But I have been, I'd love a second pair of these. I mean, these are really, really worn. They're even going ever so slightly sticky with the rubber. But they have been seriously abused in the time I've had them, which is, um, I think, about seven, eight years. Glasses case, generally because when I'm, when I'm out photographing or filming, um, I used to wear contacts for going out, but really now that with the EOS R, I can use the eyepiece for checking on my um, focus or anything else, I just tend to not wear them at all. It's just easier to not have them. My long distance isn't so bad, so I can find the animals, I can see the animals without having to have my glasses on. And the last thing on the top is my accessories pouch, which I have made a video on. So if you're interested in in this 
10 pound kind of giant pencil case and what parts I keep in there, then please look at the video. Then on the top of the bag, we have an Anchor 20,000 milliamp, which is um, which has been a, absolutely a, an absolute bullet of power. It's quite heavy, but there's just some things you can't scrimp on, and power, unfortunately, is one of them. Some waterproof gloves, which are goat skinned by Marmot. Always carry a midge net, and that's usually because I happen to be in Scotland or Wales and I suddenly realise I'm being bitten, so they live in here. I've always got a couple of buffs, either Camo 1 or at the moment we're in a, in a new National Geographic one that I use for keeping me warm around the neck or, you know, I can pull it up over my face as a bit of a as a bit of a camouflage tool or if I haven't got my hat with me I just stick it on my head keep my head warm but I've usually got a woolly hat whether it's my Phil Raven one or my camouflage one lens cloth to keep cleaning everything and my Garmin E-Trex E-Trex 20 which I've had since uh, I think I've had that for 18 years. I think. I think I got it for my 30th for my wife. But I just, I use it every time I go out um, in the woods when I'm just focusing on what I'm doing and not kind of where I'm going or what I've come, where I've come from. So I can whack it on, especially when I'm in the woods and no matter where it is or what time of day it's got to, um, I can find my way back. I mean, I guess I can use the phone as well, but I don't always rely on that. I rely on this because I have done for so long and I think they are worth every single penny. My notebook, which I use for writing, obviously, same as everybody else, information on Kingfishers that I'm at the moment trying to find in Guildford. Um, some information on the white-tailed eagle, which I'm also have been down to once, but I'm going down to again on the Isle of Wight to try and find. Um, I just use it for writing down ideas, plans, things I need to remember that I've got to talk about. Everybody should be carrying a pad of some description. Um, a good quality flashlight that I have on a few occasions um, taped to my lens so that when the, it's getting a bit darker and I want to still photograph, I've used it for macro especially as well because when I'm out and about I've usually got my um, either my 17 to 40 lens or 24 to 70 in the bag and the 24 to 70 has got a built-in macro function so I often um, if I'm can't find what I'm looking for or I just see something that takes my eye in the macro world I will um, often use it by lighting in fact there is a video I did on um, mushrooms by torchlight using my EOS R my 20, uh, 24 to 70 lens with the macro function and I even think it was this torch <clears throat> which is a uh, LED lenser TT and it's a very very solid um, very good lumens torch and I think the last thing in the top is yeah it's a selfie stick not that I generally use it for vlogging on with the selfie but nine times out of ten um, if I am using it it's often to extend the height and range of so if I do want to if it isn't quite high enough off a bench um, instead of setting up the second tripod 
often I'll just take this because yeah it's not the most solid of things but usually once it's in situ it's fine um, and sometimes when I'm on the ground and I want it to be amongst the branches that the big tripod just gets in the way and this strangely enough um, does actually do quite a good job and if I do want to extend it as a selfie it too does it does work if you want to get a wider shot but it's just a few little kind of doesn't always go with me but it tends to be in there a fair bit because it's handy for a few things I also do have a second um, not GoPro it's a cheapy um, 50 pound eBay one that's in a waterproof case that again doesn't always go out with me depending on where I'm going if I'm going canoeing I'll often take it because I like to um, to dunk it under the water in which case I will use this stick um, if it's raining really hard and I still want to get some b-roll I'll take that because I've got so many things plugged into my GoPro with the case with the waterproof case off I don't want to ruin it and so that actually is 4k apparently um, and that does a fine job so that is often in my bag if I know I'm going anywhere it's either, whether I'm either going to want to dunk in the water or if I know it's due to rain hard the last couple of things in the very back again this holds so much stuff right do we have camera bag rain cover although it is waterproof I'd say it's shower proof not torrential raindrop and it doesn't hurt to keep that dry just for the sake of such a small item that was four or five pounds a rain cover for the camera again I think it was about ten pounds but it's it's quite a handy thing to have if the weather is that bad and I have to ha have had to use it a few times but it's quite nice to know that again for this size and a few pound it's worth keeping a sit mat sitting on the ground don't want to get a wet bum or if it's on a cold rocks I don't want a cold bum and this I think was like three pounds caramel it's just a cheapy make but I've had it probably 10-12 years and it does the job it folds pretty flat doesn't take up much room and the last thing in my bag is a poncho a waterproof poncho and again for a few reasons I don't want to get even though I'm often wearing waterproofs if it's coming down that hard it's just nice to throw this over me it saves my straps getting soaked especially if I've got to get back into the camper van it just saves everything I've then got to hang up and try and dry remains dry and I've just got this one thing that I can shake off and leave in the dashboard to dry out if I really want to um, sometimes I've used it for just hanging over me and the camera and the tripod as camouflage when I'm out photographing and again that was inexpensive I think it was it was under 20 pound and because I can use it as camouflage or as a proper waterproof because sometimes when it rains it's just I just rather keep everything bone dry and it doesn't take up much room it weighs a little bit it's quite heavy that poncho and the last thing is I have a little pouch that's strapped to the side of my rucksack which has usually got a little pen knife fire starter and usually my Leatherman's which is attached to my trousers at the moment and that's pretty much it if anybody has got any questions about what I use or um, 
if any of it was worth buying or not buying then leave a comment in the section below there's a couple of things I would change or I'm going to change I definitely want to upgrade the drone because I want it to be able to go faster I want the signal strength to be greater and I also want the follow me function dependent on weather it depending on which gloves I carry I've got waterproofs which I'm using at the moment because it's cold and wet out there but I also have just some thinner wind stoppers and I've also got some pinkyless like summer gloves because the worst thing for wildlife photography is having your little white stubbies flashing up against the light like a beacon for wildlife to see so I've always got gloves on whether it's um, summer camouflage wind stoppers or waterproofs I've got a few other parts that I don't always carry in my bag there are things I change around a lot like instead of a woolly hat I've got like a, a th uh, it's like a thin grade balaclava which obviously completely covers me um, there's a picture of me wearing it there I do often carry a scrimshaw or something along those lines to hang over the camera but basically that's everything I take out with me on a daily basis on an every trip like I said I often change the gloves and I change the hat but other than the, the, the little bits that change down through the seasons this is what goes out every time I go out it looks a lot and it feels a lot when it's filling up that bag and I've usually got my small tripod one side which is often used for the vlogging and the big tripod with the Manfrotto MVH 502 video head strapped to the other side and a flask of coffee it usually ends up weighing around the the 20-ish kilos and that's when I'm glad I'm not always hiking that far thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed seeing what I use and how not necessarily how I use it but what I use and why I carry it if you don't subscribe it'd be great if you could and if you've liked the video then please give it a thumbs up because that helps the channel and if you'd like to see more upcoming videos then click on the notifications tab and that'll let you know when my next video is up and running I post every Friday at five o'clock and at the moment I'm doing a little mini series on a, a two or three minute videos on a Tuesday of breaking down the individual parts that I use some of the extra bits so until next time thanks for watching see you soon bye for now if you want to know more about me or see some of my images you'll find me on haydenthomasphotography.co.uk you'll also find me on Instagram Facebook and Twitter